Uh, welcome everyone to uh, the City of Northampton Urban Forestry Commission meeting, October 6, 2024. Uh, we have uh, two members of the public, uh, Kent and Councillor Jarrett. Do either one of either one of you have uh, comments? Public comment for us, Kent. Yeah, hi. Um, so I want to speak in support of the Strength and Significant Tree Ordinance that's on the agenda and actually request and suggest that you make it even stronger. I sent out um, an email to all of you, uh, I think yesterday, with some suggestions. Um, first of all, to decrease the diameter at breast height re uh, qualification for trees in the central business and urban residential zones. Many of the urban heat islands in Northampton are in the central business district and the urban uh, urban residential zones. So trees are really precious there. Um, second, to strengthen the requirement a little bit, make uh, not to give less latitude to the planning board for exceptions and put specifically which exceptions are count as um, public good and not make it up to their interpretation. Um, another suggestion is to increase the diameter, the replacement requirement for very large trees, which is something that some other municipalities have done. And then to expand the record keeping requirement to um, require keeping records of the individual projects as well as just the totals. Um, happy to answer Questions. I know I'm not a member of the commission, so I'm commenting uh, during public comment instead of in the uh, scheduled agenda time. Uh, but I, I do hope that you will strengthen the ordinance um, at least as much as has been proposed and uh, hopefully even more so. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Kent. Uh, Councilor Jarrett, I don't, you don't see your hand up, but I didn't know if you wanted to make a comment. Uh, no, thank you. I'm here to listen. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, thank you for the public comment. So review and approve minutes of 10 to 24. Did folks have a chance to review them? Yes. Everyone's shaking their head, except I'm not sure about Sue. Looks like Sue's reading. Sue's good. Jen? I read them. I wasn't here, so okay. I have to have All right. stay. Okay. All right. Um, is there any suggested changes, corrections before we make a motion to accept them? Molly? I wasn't here either, but there's a section um, that says, uh, that refers to an email that I sent you um, about the letter to landowners for setback trees. Um, I haven't started working on the letter. Actually, I would like to get some um, suggestions about how to approach a letter like that to landowners that are, or I say property owners that are actually LLCs, um, because a vast majority of them are, are not actually people living there. Um, I'd like to have a little bit of discussion about the best way to approach those LLCs which okay. I think is on the agenda. It could be on agenda. Um, well, we could actually, we can talk about it later. It is the setback initiative. So that would be the time yeah. to talk about that. Okay. So changing the, the minutes is just that I'm not working on the letter, but I want to work on the letter, but I want some feedback on it or ideas. Okay. Anyone else? Thank you, Molly. Uh, could we get a motion to accept the minutes as amended? I'll make a motion to accept the minutes as amended. And do we have a second? A second. And Rich Parrish, thank you very much. So there's a motion to uh, accept the minutes as amended with a second. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, could uh, we have a roll call, please, Bonnie? Sure. Uh, Rich Parasoletti. Uh, yes. Susan? Yes. Molly? Abstain. I was absent. Oh, okay. Uh, 
David? Yes. Richard? Parrish? Yes. Okay. Yes. And Jen? I yes. was yes. abstained. I'm okay. absent too. Okay. Thanks. Okay. All right. Um, thank you very much. Motion carries. Uh, chair report. Uh, let's see. So we will be talking about this a little bit further on down the uh, ordinance uh, about the STO. But um, I did, uh, as the chair of the commission, meet with the mayor on August 27th and September 10th um, with Carol and Mish in both meetings. Uh, and then September 10th, uh, Councillor Jarrett joined us to discuss um, the existing draft of the STO, which we will get into more depth, uh, a couple more items down from here, actually right below this one. Um, there have uh, been no requests for any public shade tree hearings other than the ones that we did over the summer, which were the 39 Day Avenue, the Turkey Hill Road one, and... Um, 64 Fern Street, which they all have been, all the applicants, their trees have been removed and mitigation is either in hand or has, uh, is on its way. So there's no other requests at this time. Um, and, um, you know, there, we've been planting, obviously, uh, doing a fair amount of planting, even though it's been dry. So we can talk about that in our fall planting update. Um, I apologize for canceling the last meeting at the last minute, but I had a, um, a, a conflict that I could not get out of. So thank you for bearing with me. Uh, it's nice to see you all. It's been a, it's been a while. I, it's been a month actually. So too, too long. Um, and, um, really I don't, there's really other than just regular operational business of moving trees, planting trees, doing tree work, tree removal on the, on the tree warden side of things. Um, I did actually re, uh, review a plan today with Carolyn um, that is a shared uh, a shared path use for the Rocky Hill Greenway, which is mm -hmm. off of Route 66. It's going to connect the Rocky Hill Greenway that comes out of Ice Pond Drive, go across Route 66, down Route 66 for a short piece, and then take a right into the woods where it will connect with the um, rail trail going to East Hampton. So there are going to be multiple public shade tree removals there um, in order to widen the, the path that exists. Or sorry, the path that's going to be built because of the steep slope that's there. But I'll have more information as we get closer to that. I, I don't know. That project is pretty close to being shovel ready, um, but I'm not sure if um, I'm not sure when that's going to happen. I have to meet with Carolyn again about this project. So other than that, there's no other public potential public shade tree hearings that I'm aware of. So, um, and um, that's really, that's really about it. I don't have a lot. So um, anyone have any questions? Rich, uh, could you remind me, do I, owe, I do need to ask you, do I owe you the two years of the tree planting? Was it 2021 and 2022? Is that what you... Mm -hmm. That's correct. Okay. I will get those to you tomorrow. I know I said that before, but I will get it to you tomorrow. 2021, 2022. Okay. Um, and then, uh, Rich, I wasn't able to read your email earlier about the tree uh, pruning training. Have, is there a date set for that? I saw it come in my inbox, but I didn't read it yet. Uh, I'm, I uh, put out some options for folks to try to get the maximum number of attendees. So, Okay. In a couple of days, I will have the, the date, but it will almost certainly be the week of November 18th. Okay. November 18th. Okay. Uh, Rich froze. So what uh, we're alluding to is that uh, Tree Northampton is going to be ramping up again in conjunction with uh, Jay Gerard and volunteers from Tree Northampton to uh, do the young tree train pruning. Um this uh during this winter or probably late december january Fe february yeah. march correct like, just similar as to past yeah. year yeah so if anyone is interested There's, uh, yes yeah rich you're having a little video feed 
it's a little slow. I don't know, but we can see you, but you're not moving any longer. Um, other than that, I don't really have any other comments. Uh, I do see that Jackie Bowen. Yeah, we'll hope to start in December and carry on as the season permits. Okay. Uh, is uh, anyone, would anyone object to having Jackie? I think Jackie has her hand raised. She's entered the meeting. Would anyone object to having her make a public comment? No. Okay. Jackie, hello. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, just to let you know, the hot link on the city's website for this meeting was ineffective, and I had to call the DPW just in the nick of time to get someone named Cindy who sent me a hot link, which I have just forwarded to other people who were interested in this meeting who may have given up because they couldn't get on. Just thought you should know. Mm. Thank you. My apologies. Yeah, I couldn't get on on the um, public link on the agenda. I had to go to the invitation. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, I'm not sure. Yeah, this, is, this is an important meeting. This is not the first time this is uh, this has happened before in the past, and I'm not sure what. It's almost like there's one digit being left off. I, I don't. I hmm. I will try to correct that. I don't think it's that because I the way I got on was I went I opened Zoom first and then I copied the meeting number from the agenda and put that in and that worked. And then I copied the um, password from the agenda and that worked and I got in. So I don't know what the problem is that's happening to other people. Okay. Yeah, the blue public meeting link is not actually a link on the agenda. It's just, it's just blue text. There's no, there's no, you can't click on it. Oh. Huh, okay. That's interesting. Thanks. Thank you for that. I will check into that. Sorry about that, folks. Okay. Any other comments? Public meeting link. Okay. All right. I don't have anything else. So we can move on to the draft STO discussion. Did everyone have a chance to read the the draft? Mm-hmm. Um, Good question. Yes. So the draft that was there was only parts of it, right? The, no, the draft, what, what I sent you was the whole ordinance that we redrafted two oh. years ago. R or a yeah, year and a half ago. I don't, maybe it was operator malfunction on my end. I okay. tried to read it and all I got was like parts of pages I, I don't know well what i did is i sent it to you in a pdf and I, I kept the track changes on the side so you could see where the the our recommended changes were made right based on our most previous two meetings that we had right okay there's a lot of blank space on the pages but um like on the first page there's at 350-11.5b is like one paragraph and then the rest of it is a blank page. And then it goes to um, the next page is 350-12.3. And there's, I mean, almost a full page there. Is that what you're seeing, Jen? Um, I'm not on it right now. It was just, mm -hmm. it didn't seem like the whole thing was there. I don't know, but that could have been, you know, maybe I didn't download it or, you know, could have been me. But usually, let me see if I can get it. Uh, let's see. Would it be helpful if I put it up on the screen? Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let That'd me, be great. Uh, Thanks. Sorry about yeah. that. I don't. I don't know. No. 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 It's all good. Just. It's good on. to make sure that we're all looking at the same thing. Yep. Yeah, I agree. I Just give me one moment, please. I had a question about it though. Um, sure. I'm not sure. It was so long ago that we worked on it. I don't remember what were the. What were the edits that we made and what were the edits that you know carolyn made i'm not sure like all the, the things that are in blue are those the things that we added last time and then it, it sounded like from your letter about it that um carolyn had made some more edits after that and i'm just confused whose edits are whose uh, just hold on one second and and when they happened 
Let's, okay. Now, ooh, we can. This is interesting. Okay. All right. Can go. everyone yep. see? Okay. All right. Let's get to this one. So the blue, okay, so the, so where it says delete, so first page, the blue that's in here that exists is actually the, the changes that we made originally. So if you go to page two, here's the here's the here's the table that now exists that didn't exist before. This was so anything that was in blue is what we changed, and that was that was through multiple conversations and meetings with the um, Office of Planning and Sustainability. Right. So, the changes that Carolyn, uh, the changes that Carolyn made most recently, are not on page one. That's original. Page two. So the one change that Carolyn made was the change in um, the URC, URB, and URA. Um, that was that diameter breast height was um, raised. That was, I believe, that was fourteen or thirteen. Mm. Uh, the seventeen uh, has always been the same, if I remember correctly. Um, the other change that Kelly made is down under D, number one, trees located under the care and custody of the Conservation Commission. Um, the tree warden was added, public works or tree warden. Um, shall I restore? Okay, let's scroll down one more. This blue is what was in there from before. Trees were moved in order to create a net zero energy building. So this was all this dot, this section here that I'm circling with my arrow was all in the previous ordinance. Ratio So this is all actually A is all in the in this as well i'm just i'm just looking for something that i'm not seeing in here i'm just going to jump in and say i think it's helpful if you go to the you know city's e code and then it gives you a little context of where these these sections fit in the larger document i think that's why it can feel kind of confusing yeah, it's a good point, Sue. Because, for example, this page right here, this is this is cut and pasted out of the three fifty dash eleven point five, which has a whole other section underneath it, which That's is why. part of site plan, section eleven is site plan approval. Correct. So that's that's, that's something under that's, procedures. Yep, and that's not that's not being changed. It's just this part B two I. Yep. Which is just one of, you know, lots of different pieces in it. Um, a general comment I would make is just to re remember that a lot of the sections in blue that we edited and changed were, they weren't, they were compromises between what we wanted and what planning and sustainability wanted. Like, I think we did want, if I remember correctly, we did want smaller diameters for these different um, areas on that section C that we're looking at. Mm -hmm. But but planning and sustainability pushed back and wanted larger diameters. And same thing with the issue about the um, replacement, you know, one inch for one inch. Originally, it was one inch. It was only half an inch replacement for one inch 
and we increased it to one inch for one inch, even though we had long discussions about how that doesn't capture nearly the full amount of the volume of the tree that's being taken out. Yep, that's a... Uh... And just for, like, full clarification, it's been a long time since we... And I just want to make sure that we've gone over this. I just want to make sure, especially the public and um, uh, city councilors, this understand. This has nothing to do with private trees. It's only public trees, correct? No, it's actually, it does have to do with private trees that are actually under site plan approval, special permit or zoning relief. So public trees in Northampton presently that are in the public right of way, public parks, public cemeteries are, well, sorry, trees in the public right of way are governed by MGL 87. Right. This ordinance is only for private, for projects that are under site plan approval, special permit, or zoning relief from the planning board. So this is not for by right construction. This is not for ADUs accessory dwelling units, et cetera. So anyone that wants to pull a building perm out to build an ADU on their property now, which they're allowed because the state passed that legislation that allows us to have ADU units, I think it's up to 900 square feet, you can remove all the trees on the lot to do what you need to do because it's not, doesn't, doesn't require zoning relief, doesn't require any review by the planning board. Mm -hmm. So what would be an example of um, a project, just make one up or whatever, that would fall under zoning relief or I guess I'm not clear what zoning relief is and what was the other thing? Special permit? What? Yes, special permit site plan review. So site plan review would be like 8 View, 8 View Avenue, one of the most recent projects that... Um, the planning board reviewed and the conservation commission reviewed over several months, which is off of North street. Oh yeah. So that, that, that would be an example of trees that are on private property. They're going to be impacted by the building of the 12 units that are there. Mm -hmm. This is where this uh, ordinance applies. Okay. Um, zoning relief would be if someone were to, um, Share driveway situation. So if you have a, you know, if you have a, a piece of property that abuts another property behind it and you need to utilize a shared driveway, you have to have a, uh, you have to have zoning relief or a special permit in order to do that from the planning board, things of that nature. Okay. So, so it's not like super comprehensive. It's kind of a special yes. niche. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I just, I yep. really appreciate that. I just yep. wanted to, so I yep. make sure everybody's it's clear everybody's on the same page. Yeah, thanks, Jen. That's helpful. Yeah. Um, two, two things I will tell you, that two things that came out of um, the two meetings that we had. One was we talked about um, better understanding the city's overall canopy. Um, and so we, uh, we, we're, we have been investigating um, doing a LIDAR flower for the city and the dollar amount, how much that will cost. But uh, luckily for us, the state did a, a, a LIDAR back in the spring. Mm. So we actually have um, the ability to actually get that data layer. And then I think we can do some analysis. So that's one mm. thing, which is good. So I'm working with Carolyn and the uh, Office of Planning Sustainability on that. The second thing is, is that, um, as you know, most of our permits uh, in the city are electronic. So um, we we talked, uh, Carolyn and I spoke with the mayor and uh, with Councillor Jarrett as well uh, to talk about potentially trying to track at a minimum at least to better understand um, the amount of trees that are being removed on private property for any kind of building permit that is pulled. So that has actually just been inserted into the electronic permit system. So if you go to the building department, um, their permitting system is electronic. There's drop down boxes you have to fill out um, the amount of the, the quantity of trees and their diameter of breast height that's being removed. So we can at least have an understanding, even though this ordinance doesn't um, um, cover those types of uh, projects, at least we'll have a starting point. 
because um, we that's really don't progress. Oh, excuse me, what? That's good progress. Yeah, I mean, it, it is good progress. And then I also think that having real time or almost real time LIDAR would be very helpful for us and getting it analyzed to really understand what our what our canopy looks like presently and have a baseline that is pretty close to hopefully, you know, accurate within, um, what is six months. So those are two things, which, which is good because there are, again, there are a lot of, uh, by right construction projects that are happening where trees are being removed. Um, you know, that will not, that will not track, um, other trees that are being removed that, uh, you know, where there's no building permit taken. So someone who wants to just clean, you know, take some trees down in the yard, that is not, there's no requirement to have that tracked. And there, there's no way to capture those things. Mm -hmm. So. Was the thinking um, on the part of the planning department when it comes to these, um, both the table and section C and the replacement values, they felt like having stricter requirements would be too burdensome for for people applying for permits and they want to like encourage are they trying to encourage you know making it easier to get the permits no i think what they're trying i you know i don't want to speak for them but i i what they're trying to do is they're trying to follow the city sustainable sustainability plan where um, they're encouraging um, development in, uh, you know, the UR, CURB, and URA, mm. and the, the CB, core side and gateway areas uh, for denser uh, density housing, denser development, mm. um, with the with the hopes that, um, you know, smaller units will be built that are more, that are hopefully almost net zero, and now fossil fuel free. Um, and actually people will hopefully leave their uh, cars behind and will walk and bike, um, hopefully um, with the intent of um, reducing one's carbon footprint, um, hmm. which is a big portion, obviously, of the sustainability plan. And I think their concern was, is that if we if we shrunk the diameter of breast height, um, that that potentially would be um, a detractor from having um, developers want to develop uh, uh, properties with that type of density housing. Mm. Um, you know, I mean, uh, you know, a 15 inch tree, uh, just for an example, a 15 inch mm -hmm. tree, depending on the tree species, that's roughly probably, again, I'm using this generally, it's probably about a 20, 28 to 29 year old tree. So that tree is just about to become carbon neutral. Mm. So it's just about to kick, kick you know, the benefit, the overall benefits um, that we really need are about to kick in. Um, mm. But I, I also, I also understand that they are, um, the planning office is also trying to discourage um, large, large uh, swaths of development uh, in the, uh, the two, uh, the, the, uh, um, zoning districts um, on the last two of the table were the 10 inch and the six inch, which are much farther out in the more wooded areas of the city because they don't want people to develop there and then actually have to get in their vehicles and then drive to X, Y, and Z place they have to be. Um, you know, I, and I, 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 um, and I also think the other thing too is that this is, you know, in essence, we, I think David, myself, and Lily actually started this with a planning, the the planning board, probably the planning probably prior to the pandemic, if I remember correctly. And we've sort of been just picking away at it. Uh, and you know, I it's it's sort of a, it's a negotiation in essence. It's a give and take. Uh, and and the question is, is that if we, you know if we do this uh, as a group and we try to negotiate with the office of planning and sustainability to, you know, sort of make the numbers sort of work for, for, for everyone, um, then we potentially have their support and the ordinance uh, will be strengthened, even though the diameters or breast height are a little higher than, than some folks would like. 
Um, so, I, I mean, I, you know, I, I really sort of want to defer to all of you because I, um, you know, this is a sort of a group discussion. I'm doing all the talking, but I'm looking for anyone to have any comments or thoughts. Um, one, uh, something Kent, I read when I read his comments, the letter mm -hmm. from folks in the community, uh, the, the part about documentation, um, that doesn't seem like a huge ask. Um, it, go, no, ahead. go ahead. No, go ahead. Um, yeah, to me, it doesn't, maybe I, I don't understand the full picture, but that doesn't seem like a huge ask to me. And it seems important to, to be able to, you know, I just know on the planting end, we are keeping a lot of data so we can figure out, uh, you know, where we're at, what's surviving, what's not surviving, should we you know, where's the most need, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And um, having that information is just super important, I think. I agree that the the pieces of data that, that Kent and members of the community are encouraging us to um, ask to be tracked are important, like the date of approval, the address, the name of the applicant, number of trees removed, the total DBH, the number of replacement trees planted, the total DBH of replacement trees, and the dollar amount paid to the mitigation fund. The, all of those pieces of data just seem like very, very pertinent to anyone who cares about the city's canopy. So um, on the email, number one, um record the date of planning board approval project address applicant name and number that those those that information uh total dbh of trees removed the number of replacement trees is all in the public file on the planning oh. board's website per project so because uh like the total of total dbh of trees removed and number of replacements require trees planted or required is also part of the calculation that the planning board has to approve so those are all on those site plan um they're usually on the project sheets or the plan the plan sheets um annual totals of the number of diameter of uh diameter breast height measurements of trees preserved and replaced is um that is not the the trees preserved is also on those plans because it will show you on the plan it's not in a table per se but it's also um on the on the sheets as well um, but the actual, the dollar amount, so when there's mitigation, the dollar amount, Carolyn keeps all that on a spreadsheet, from what I understand, in the planning office. Uh, everyone okay? I'm going to have let Kent, Kent go ahead, if everyone's okay. Yeah, the intent there is to centralize it. Yes, the information is in the plans, but it's very difficult to find even on the View Avenue plan, that you know you have to go through the the full um, set of plans and scroll down to the page eight or something, and there's a table. So to capture that information for you know for a citizen to try to find that information for a year is very difficult. Whereas capturing it at the time of the approvals is a lot easier, and and I believe they're actually doing something like that, because I do have some uh, data from Carolyn. I asked her for, for information about from that record keeping requirement, then got spreadsheets with details. So I don't think it's onerous to actually say that that's a requirement. But to, to expect citizens to go through all the planning board documents to find that, that's a, that's a huge task. So I, I question a. Uh, I can see in a perfect world, yes, data collection is preferred. But I, I wonder, after the tree work is done, what will the data? What purpose will that data serve? Uh, you know, we will either have new trees 
planted or trees removed, so be it. Or are we just collecting data for the sake of collection or will it actually be used? Jen. Um, I can see where that would be useful that in the future, if we are having overall uh, canopy decrease in the city, which I, I'm not saying that's happening now and, you know, but if that's happening like it was in Cambridge, what Cambridge found out is they were losing the primary canopy loss was on private properties. Uh, so then they took that data and said, we need a different kind of ordinance. And I'm not saying that's where we should end up or anything like that. I'm just saying to me, I agree with Kent that hoeing through documents or looking at plans or wherever you got to go, if we are already recording uh, dollar amounts, I, you know, on that same spreadsheet, I don't, you know, I'm not a spreadsheet guru, but on that same spreadsheet, how hard would it be just to record all the information? You know, we're, I mean, this is about sustainability ultimately. And trees have been left out of Northampton, city of Northampton sustainability plans from the get go. Mm -hmm. And I have a big problem with that. I'm, you know, I know sometimes there's conflict there, but you know, it's gray infrastructure, gray infrastructure, gray infrastructure, and green infrastructure is not being considered at the same level and the same value. And I think that is a huge mistake. So that's why I would like to see a simple centralized place with all that data in it. And I don't really think it would be that hard to do it. If some of that information is already being recorded. To get rid of I, I second everything that Jen just said. And um, I'm in agreement with with what she's saying too. If almost all of the pieces of data are already being captured here or there, um, why not, if we care about our canopy, make it easy to see for all of us and for the public um, what the trends are and what the baseline is. And, you know, at least on the, the section of projects that go through special permitting or variances through the planning board. Ideally, it would be all of them, but that's all. Any other comments from commissioners? Molly. Um, so looking at that chart in section C there, um, it's, it's difficult to weigh out like, how much benefit is gained by people not driving as much compared to that tree or trees that would be, you know, staying there if if um if the diameters were smaller, or well maybe it wouldn't be staying there, but it would be replaced at least. Um, this is saying that if it's, am I reading this right? That if it's if a tree is less than 17 inches in the city core that they don't even have to do any replacement. Is that? That is, is that correct. Right? Yep. Yeah. That seems, uh, I don't know. It just seems like, um, you know, that tree, that 17 inch tree is, um, or a 16 inch tree is valuable. You know, it's performing a service. Um, every minute that it's standing there and you know how much does that add up to compared to the um less driving that would supposedly happen by people living closer to the city <laughs> i don't know you want to listen to it no uh, no i have to go start the chicken yes. you know for the for a, a tree removal to be to kick in under this criteria that represents an expense to the developer, correct? To replace, mm -hmm. to buy trees, replace them. And so 
if somebody's going to be building something, you know, we're talking about perhaps at least a few hundred thousand dollars worth of investment in, in that new property, that new structure. And would the cost of re, of buying new trees, which perhaps would what a thousand, a couple thousand dollars, I think is fairly minimal in comparison to the overall project. And so I would be in favor of of reducing those diameter sizes uh, because I think the cost is is not significant to a, a builder. I understand the planning board's view. We don't want to dissuade them, but I don't think that cost would be significant to them. So it might not even serve the purpose of uh, dissuading um, building, or I say encouraging building downtown. It might not even serve that purpose because the cost, even if even if they do have to do replacement trees, it might not really matter that much. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, just in the two years since we started working on this, the overall cost of a project has gone up. So it would at least be reasonable to look at that type of increase and how this fits in. That increment of increase. I, I have a question about Table C. If you consider the URC, URB, URA, 15 dBH, do we know how many how many trees um, there are currently that would that are, that are 15 dBH or more within those zones? No. No, because most of the trees, other than the public shade trees, they're all on private property. Right. So you're not gonna you're not gonna know what the diameter of breast height is until there's an actual project that is an, a an application that comes in front of the planning board. Um, I think LIDAR actually, LIDAR can provide possibly diameter of breast height, an average diameter or an estimated diameter of breast height. But I, that would, we'll have to look into that when we go down the LIDAR road. But I don't think typically, you know, we don't know what the DBHs are on private property. Rich, do you have a feel for, Uh, um this uh, how can i put this um do you have a feel for where the planning board is pretty which which topics or which areas the planning board is pretty like this is our limit you know what i mean it's kind of like new union negotiation you know like w do you think they would be open to reconsidering the the um DBHs, or I wasn't super involved in this, but I do remember we went all around on these numbers before. So, so this this um, draft has really just been a draft form between um, the staff in the Office of Planning and Sustainability and myself and the whole commission. Mm -hmm. So the planning, the planning board is aware of this, but they don't know um, they're not, they have not, I don't know if they've seen this. They may have seen this, but it has not been introduced as far as I know. Okay. So, so, I, so we have been relying upon previous negotiations with Wayne and with Carolyn relying upon their, um, instincts as to how the planning board would potentially receive this. And having their backing, having the, the planning department's backing, would be significant in getting this through the planning commission or getting approval by the planning? I mean, I, I believe- I don't really understand how it works totally. So, you know, the way this would work is that, you know, whatever we we decide to change something, we decide to accept it the way it is, it goes back, uh, and our recommendations go back to the mayor. And then the mayor, um, would uh, uh, submit this as a, a earnest change uh, to the city council, and then it would be referred out to committee to be reviewed. 
Um, and then in the same time, there'd be a public, a joint public hearing, I believe, held between city council and planning board to review this where uh, anyone from the public can come and um, talk to the planning board and the city council about this. Um, sure. and, and it would make its way back in front of the city council uh, eventually with some uh, out of committee with some potential recommendations and changes um, and then the city council would inevitably uh, decide to take it up uh, on a vote and um, that would be where it would that's how it would sort of go basically in a very short <laughs> tutorial I probably missed okay. the step somewhere but uh -huh. so so this has been this has been sort of massaged over multiple years um mm -hmm. given from you know given i think what we learned from uh from projects that have that have come and gone or projects that have been uh built um a lot of the technical ask in there for like having a certified arborist and having a tree risk assessment are all sort of like best management practices um but i think really everyone i think everyone sort of zooms in and on the table because we're talking about the diameters and the value of trees today in our urban canopy is incredible. I mean, there's, I don't think any one of us would say that they are not uh, extremely valuable, if not one of the most valuable things that we have. So, um, it's it's a it's difficult to see the diameters at that uh, that size, I guess. Yeah. Um, but but also, I just want to remind you all that this is just for site plan special permit and zoning relief so there are many other trees being removed under uh just regular building permits by right construction that 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 will not alter that this will just apply to the um the zoning regulations if and those three items david you had a question i think or you were going to say something uh well, I was just going to note that in Kent's email, he he says that the uh, the DBH in Cambridge and Newton is six, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, no, I, I guess I don't really have anything to say except just that these these numbers really do just feel picked out of a hat. But I think maybe I mean it. So it sounds like it, it, that here on the UFC, we would just like to see more stringent, a lower threshold. It doesn't have to be six, but. Um... I mean, an, another way of helping folks, I think, would be to basically uh, use uh, like the iTree Eco tool, where you would um, plug in the diameter, the location of the tree, the diameter and breast height of the tree, uh, and you would um, Basically, you, you can also potentially, if there's a building next to it, there is a whole heating and cooling element to iTree Eco. You could generate a report for each one of these diameter trees, and you could actually see their benefits over, mm -hmm. you know, the pre present benefits of today, mm -hmm. and then benefits as far out as, um, I think, 50, I think it's 50, 50 years. Hmm. So you you can so I guess maybe that might be helpful for for folks to sort of do maybe do that exercise or I could actually run that exercise and and send it to you for for mm. your review because you can print out in a uh, form um, a report. So I mean it it would be it would be helpful, but again we're just we're trying to understand what the best diameter at breast height is for preservation purposes. Uh, and also um, for mitigation purposes as well, because not only do developers have the op the uh, requirement to possibly replant, they can also just mitigate for the loss of the trees by paying into the city's tree fund, which is what happens the majority of the time. Because the footprints of these projects are becoming more tightly uh, compacted, so there's less there's less yard space, um, there's less places for trees although they do do a mix of trees and uh shrubs or smaller uh perennial plant material but i don't know if that would be helpful 
Well, what you would do, the analysis you could get would give us a dollar value of the value yeah. of that tree. Yep, it would give um, you like the amount of uh, you know, uh, storm stormwater, stormwater avoided, amount of CO two sequestered, uh, CO two avoided. Um, it would give you. Um, trying to think, I just did one the other day. I don't have it here with me, um, but I. Um, it would also well, give you. Uh, like the uh, the amount of uh, pollutants that uh, the tree actually absorbs and sort of scrubs the air, et cetera, huh. and give you, you know, the, those those would all, it would tell you like pounds, tons, and then it would tell you the dollar value. That would be interesting to know, especially if we could compare it to the replacement, like how much does it cost to buy a certain number of one inch diameter trees, you know, as replacement, like if each, you know, a sapling tree or whatever costs a uh, hundred dollars you know, how many trees would they have to buy to replace, you know, the actual value of the tree monetarily, that would be a useful comparison. Okay. But I think it's more about the tricky thing here, I think is the larger DBH, the more services it's providing, right? And there is a tipping point of when it's sequestering carbon, which is kind of the driver behind <laughs> this whole thing of infill and all this stuff. So it's kind of like in some aspects we're, you know, robbing Peter to pay Paul, you know, um, we're, we're, I mean, I'm not against infill per se. I just want to make that clear. Um, but it gets a little tricky because if we're being all right about removing these big trees and, oh yeah, we'll put in a couple, let's say we'll put in 10 smaller ones the reality is that big tree, if it's been there for X number of years, had a way different growing environment. It was cooler. Right. It's probably less compacted. It had a better opportunity to reach a mature size than what we're putting in the ground now. I mean, that's just reality. You know, if you go into a downtown of an old city and there's humongous trees, those trees are humongous because that street probably was more permeable. Mm. you know and had a way to get water and a way to you know so um where was i going with that um uh, I, I, I don't know i, I lost no, I, I think what you're let me just i think what you're saying is that the urban street trees we're planting today do not have ha will not have the same opportunity that the urban street trees that are that are in our canopy now that are uh semi-mature or you know, older adolescent semi-mature or um over mature right You're, and they may not even ever reach exactly. the maximum yes. ability to sequester yes. carbon i mm -hmm. mean they're doing a lot of other services you know that and that's that's important that's not important i mean that's not not important <laughs> but if you're talking about including carbon sequestration i mean that's a little more complex of a thinking path and also calculations i'm not an expert in that realm but um, it's, there's more to it, you know, than just, oh, we'll just replace a tree, 17 inch tree with 10 little trees, you know, with those that's comparing apples to oranges, you know, really, I mean, it's not a bad thing. If that's what we, if that's the best thing we can get, then that's the best thing we can get. But it's, there's a bigger thought process here i guess that i'm trying to bring forward yeah I, and I, that um the eye tree uh thing that rich was talking about it's kind of like what i tell people it's kind of like you know if you read the back of a vegetable can or a soup can it'll tell you so much protein so much this so much that it's kind of that format it's pretty great hmm. jen that uh, sorry one more thing i you know, the average age, the average lifespan of an urban street tree, street tree planted today is anywhere from, uh, I think it's, it's life expectancy about nine, between 19 years and 27 years. So if you have a tree that's in the ground for 27 years, um, it's probably, depending upon how big it was when it was planted, it's probably, um, 15 inches, maybe 12 inches. It depends on the species. And then that's around the 29th year is um, average of when the tree starts to actually turn the corner and become 
carbon neutral. Um, you know, it's actually sequestering more carbon than it's actually creating in essence for, you know, so many, so I, I think it would be helpful for us to see the, the, uh, eco benefits and I'd be more than happy to run them for each one of these diameters. Thank you for offering. Yep. I think that would be great. Yeah. If that would help sort of guide, uh, folks in deciding whether they wanted to adjust these numbers or not. And, uh, you know, uh, Rich, it's, thank you for offering to do that. If you if you list out the ecosystem benefits, you might be making a compelling case for say a ten to ten inch dBh threshold. But but then don't we really need to hear from somebody uh, representing the planning board or a, a hypothetical developer or something? Because otherwise we're, otherwise we're not really. I mean, yeah, the numbers are just going to be in a vacuum unless we understand the rationale for raising the dBh threshold. I, I could ask Carolyn if she'd be willing to come to a meeting, if that would be helpful. If she'd be willing or somebody from her office, I think that would be okay. helpful. Yeah, I think this table C comes down to a financial issue. Uh, you know, at what point do we, does the city have developers start to pay for their tree removal? Um, and again, if you know the uh say a 15 inch tree is removed and it they have to purchase let's say eight little trees eight two inch trees to replace the what the eight trees might cost them how much a thousand dollars no so that's eight prob sorry to interrupt rich probably about yeah. probably about eight thousand planted eight? Yes, you have, to, you have to remember that the average three inch caliper tree is probably about four, four fifty to five hundred, and then another anywhere from two fifty to four hundred to have it planted, and that includes the delivering of the tree, the digging of the hole, whatever amendments they put in. So we, the average in New England is about a thousand dollars per tree. Okay, all right, and you're talking about a commercially purchased and planted tree, not our volunteer type. That, right, that is correct. So a typical developer okay. will, will use a subcontractor to plant all their plant material. Okay. I think uh, they... Go. There was sort of a back of the envelope. We ran some scenarios with, okay, if the building project is, you know, this category of um, growth, you know, value, how much they're spending on it, at what percentage these numbers come in on for in, with different numbers of trees and there was a conversation about you know, not wanting to discourage development and growth so we could do something like that again like at what percentage of a building cost building projects cost um goes to this remediation if there are a number of trees removed and what does that mean? Um, another point is that I didn't it occur to me that the developer would be the one who would actually be planting the trees if they chose to do that instead of paying money. But we've seen so many, like almost all the trees that developers plant, they're planted poorly with the volcano mulching and the trees, you know, are going to have a shortened life because of that. So that's another issue here you know maybe that the method of planting needs to be approved by the tree commissioner as well so so typically on the projects that fall under this ordinance um i get to review the site plans which includes the planting plan and then i uh, am allowed to go back and do an inspection and then there's a two-year period uh where the trees if they are not you know if they are um in poor condition not adapting that they can the developer has to replace them but how does that fit in with like for instance leah toyota where they just buzz off all the branches i mean what's the life expectancy of a tree that you do that to <laughs> I, I couldn't answer that question 
not as long as if you probably didn't do it, I guess would be the, my answer. <laughs> um, but that, that's a separate, uh, so that is site plan approval for that project. So if, if any one of those trees dies from any type of, or they just died period, let's just say there was no buzzing off or pollarding, I think is what the, they were attempting to do. Um, the, the, the site plan, uh, the, the uh, special conditions of the site plan require there to be trees there. So they have to replace them. So, and even if the property is sold to someone else, that special permit you know, stays with that property unless it is rezoned for some other intended use. So even the next uh, person owner has to replace the trees. So there's no way to put into this that trees have to be, you know, healthy or something. I don't know how you'd word it. Uh, yeah, I don't. I mean, I think there's protection during construction. But you're saying that's already built in, Rich, because you have to go in and yeah. you would have to go back and look at these projects anyway. Is that correct? Correct. Right. So right here under <laughs> under the second paragraph down, replacement trees shall be maintained in good condition a minimum of 24 months after they are planted as, con as confirmed by the city's tree warden. If they're not found to be good in condition as determined by the tree warden, the tree shall be replaced as, direct, uh, as directed by the tree warden. So good condition is just totally up to the tree warden's discretion. Um, if all the all the branches are chopped off, that could still be as long as they're living. Yes, but the Sue, the difference there is that that those trees were planted many years ago, so this twenty four month period doesn't apply right. to those trees. Right. It's, that only oh, applies. Oh, Twenty four months. Yeah, it only applies if those trees die. Or something, say someone runs one over with a snowplow, plow in the parking lot, the owner of the property is required to uh, replace the tree because yeah. that is what was specified in the um, site plan approval. I'm sorry, I misunderstood. So if all those trees in front of Leah just died, do they have to replace them? Yes. 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 But could we change this to 24 years? You, you, you could always ask. I don't know where it would go. It doesn't hurt to ask, right? I'm being a little bit. Um, no, it's okay. It's okay. It's fine. It actually, it makes I, sense because trees are long-term investments. Yeah. It's not a two-year. Right, Molly. I know. That, that's a whole other conversation about the uh, dynamic versus static infrastructure, right? This is that mm. we're talking about dynamic infrastructure. Right. Um trying to get people to look at the uh this infrastructure as as uh not they look at it as a, as it's static it's just a thing but it's actually right. like it's very hard, it's a very hard conversation to have sometimes with um with people that are designing things or developing things yeah hmm. any other comments questions thoughts it, it's just bringing up for me remembering how i wasn't satisfied with this <laughs> back when we did it and feeling frustrated that you know that these diameters were so high and that the replacement sizes were so low um it's just you know reminding me of all that again i think it's things have changed as well i mean we're really really feeling climate change more than we were two years ago as well i mean i i'm only gonna it's only going to you know be more so each year yeah i don't disagree with any of that and i don't disagree with molly said either the numbers are a little difficult um just given the you know the more I, the more i work in the tree world the more you know, I, I, my perspective has changed over many years. Um, but I also recognize too, that we, we are, we, we are, we are asking to, to make changes to an ordinance that actually apply to us, just a small subset of what's going on in the city, um, development wise. Um, and, you know, we've had this conversation in the past about thinking about a, a different type of ordinance that would be, um, 
more protective of all poetry, sort of like Cambridge or Newton. But again, I think our data, um, we don't have the data necessarily. We, we have some data, but I think we need to have st stronger data and better tracking to determine what's being removed and how it's being removed and when and where. Um, but this this is a and this is an improvement, but I, I guess I'm hearing from folks that it could be better. I see some nodding. Yeah, here. I'd like to see it better. Okay. But I think it's it's a matter of like uh, planning is not going to want to change it because they want to, you know, the whole point is to encourage building downtown by having that high threshold diameter. I mean, Molly, you know, it's 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 not it's not going to I think if you were willing, I would be more than happy to run the eco benefits, send them, send them to you so you can see them all and then um, just ponder that yeah. before a next meeting. Uh, and then I I might be able to see if Carolyn would be willing to come to a meeting. If if you were if that would be okay, that so would I be good. Yeah, okay. I think that's a good All right. starting place. Is there anything else that commissioners would like to talk about this before we? I'm, I think so. What I'm hearing is that we'll table. We're going to table this. We're not going to take a vote on this. We're going to table it to our next meeting after we get some more information. Okay. Is that mm -hmm. okay? All right. And if anyone has any other uh, thoughts or um, things they'd like to like me to try to follow up with, please let me know. I think the, along with the data, the eco benefits, just having some kind of very rough cost estimate for what the developer would be facing for replacing 17 inch trees, 10 inch trees, whatever, um, just, It could be valuable. Okay. Okay. I can get that as well or make it some sort of a rough estimate. Um, okay. All right. Thank you. It was a great discussion. Thank you very much. I'm going to stop screen sharing. All right. So our next uh, order of business is uh, fall planting setback initiative. I wasn't sure if Jen wanted to give us a little update on the fall planting. Uh, just really quickly, um, we um, have planted 54 trees so far. Um, I think we've done uh, approximately 10 or 11 plantings. Um, we plan to continue to plant up until Thanksgiving. Um, we've had uh, one really great planting. We've uh, at the end before Thanksgiving, we should have uh, 18 trees um, on Bridge Road in St. Mary Cemetery on the edge of St. Mary Cemetery. That was a very big, um, that was a great um, asset to the city uh, for sure. That was a that was a big planting, and we've done several um, plantings where we're replacing ash trees in the in the public right away, where either we're interplanting, succession planting, and then they'll will be taken down, or sometimes they'll be taken they're taken down, and we go in and replant. So um, there's a couple streets that we've done that. So yeah, I think uh, any questions? That's what I got. I have a question. Yeah. The, the St. Mary's trees, are those setback trees? Uh, those are uh, right away. There's Okay. A, uh, I yeah. couldn't remember. Yeah. We, um, Rich, uh, met with folks from the cemetery to make sure we could uh, allow the access they needed. And in fact, next year, we're going to plant on the other side of the street. Oh, so I was going to ask about that. That yeah. would be fantastic. Yeah. 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 So that was a great um I appreciate Rich for um, you know negotiating with them, and um, it that's been a, a really a, that sidewalk is heavily used for bicycles and walkers, and um, it's a it was a wide open area, and it won't be disturbed. You know, what so, kind of trees did you plant there? Uh, we planted on that side. We're planting there's some underwire, which are winter king hawthorns, and then we planted hackberries and uh, London planes. Nice. Yeah. Maybe so we can get trees. an archway over the street if they yeah, the, the other side has 
uh, we'll probably have to do some underwires on that other side oh. because there's uh, overhead wires on the other side. But, mm. Yeah. But that was a really nice uh, big spot. So. Not a question, but a comment. Huge kudos to Jen for being mm. on top of everything. Inventory, <laughs> orders, sighting, trench permit, and keeping track of making sure dig safes, gazillion volunteers. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for the appreciation. Sue, you, for, you forgot one. You're supposed to say that Jen did a great job keeping track of me. <laughs> keeping track of Rich. <laughs> Uh, but yes, I, I again, uh, as I have told many people that I've met across the Commonwealth, they ask me, how do you get all your trees planted? Who's your contractor? And I'm like, we have an army of, and they're not contractors, they're all volunteers. So again, thank you to all of you and to uh, all the volunteers that aren't here to hear me say thank you from Tree Northampton, uh, past and present. It's been, it's, it's uh, been great. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to add that we did take a delivery of 25 B and B trees to sort of round out um, our little planting project up on Sovereign Way. Um, we're planting in the cul-de-sac, and we're also doing some street tree, uh, you know, right away plantings on the edge of the road on the back of the sidewalk. Um, and um, Jen, we're still. Uh, I think we're going to hold. We're, are we going to hold off on uh, Ridgeview? Or do you think? Um, it depends. <laughs> I think the last conversation we had was, um, excuse me. <laughs> um, I think you felt like we needed to do removals before we planted in there because they're in pretty bad yeah. shape. So we can check in with that this week. I don't know. I'll have to look at the number of dates we have and the number of sites we have. We definitely have the trees for that. We okay. set aside trees for that. So. Okay. Um, we're doing a very good job, I feel like, um, moving the nursery inventory that we have in our holding nursery into the ground. We're not holding over a ton of trees over winter, um, which is good, I think, which is, um, I mean, the longer they're sitting there, the, you know, the quality doesn't increase. So I think we, I feel like we've really gotten good at that. And we're, we also have some potential sites for next spring already so we're um we're you know gonna we're a little ahead of the curve this time i'd say so it's good okay and um, the quality has been good pretty good i mean occasionally we'll have you know that's normal to have a few that aren't the best but um the quality yeah. of the tree stock is good um, we all, just a side note, we went around, we've been going around and watering all the trees we planted this fall, uh, to supplement the, the tree diapers that are in the tree wells, um, definitely needed. Uh, and we're at, we, and that, that actually, uh, sorry, not this fall all year. So everything we've planted for the whole year, mm -hmm. it's been watered regularly since we've sort of not had any rain. Um, I'm curious about the trees that we planted last year, how they're going to leaf out in the spring coming because of this mm -hmm. drought that we have uh, are presently in. And hopefully this drought will be eventually alleviated before mm -hmm. spring. Um, mm -hmm. But I, that remains to be seen. It looks like the month of November is going to be drier uh, uh, than normal and possibly um, warmer than normal. So... Um, setback initiative. Molly, did you want to yeah. add some stuff about that? Well, um, yeah, so Kent prepared a map that showed um, where got the addresses of all the setback tree sites, planting sites that I collected um, in the, uh, when I did those, when we all did those surveys in the core quarter mile radius areas. And um and there's a spreadsheet that has all the the addresses and the owners and um, the owner's address, mailing address. Um, but I was surprised to see how many of those properties are actually owned by LLCs. They're not even owned by just normal individual people. And so I, you know, in terms of like writing letters to contact those 
LLCs. Um, what what approach should we use, and what kind of follow up would we do once we write a letter? You know, how do we even find out where these who these people are that <laughs> who the actual individuals are that are in the LLC that we would contact. I have a question, Molly. Did you, it, I, I was under the impression you've already been out and distributed information because we did get an inquiry from someone in that area and it sounded like you had contacted people. Well, maybe, I don't know if Kent and Jordan did. No, yeah. Kent, uh, Kent and I, placed about a dozen door hangers okay. that's what it was. on properties okay. on October 9th. So it, it would have, the inquiry would have come in after that date. And were October they, like, 9th, we got a response. Right. Oh. Okay, good. Was it, did you put them on door hangers of properties that had individual owners as opposed to the LLCs? Yes, we did. Yeah. And the thinking is that the best strategy with like, um, like Smith College, there's a single point of contact and ask that 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 person uh, for permission to do, you know, a dozen setback sites. Right. Now, is that the person, um, Jin Spangler, who's on the name is on the um, on a spreadsheet? Or is it the name that I think Kent sent me in an email? It was a different name. No, it's a different name but that I sent you in an email. Okay. But we can talk uh, after this meeting. Okay. All right. So for Smith College, um, I can write a letter to that person. Um, In the past, this... Rob Postal developed a system for working with Smith College. And if I recall correctly, Rich, our tree warden, please jump in. Um, the process is that um, there needs to be some kind of a meeting between the head of facilities, perhaps, the tree warden, and the um, the actual maybe ground manager, something like that, Rich. Yep. And then, so maybe a, a good idea for all the Smith properties, instead of trying to like send the letter, I don't know, Rich, you can comment, but would it be good to, if you could like make a nice, neat list of each site that we have our eyes on and then have that meeting go forward with like Molly and Kent or, you know, some volunteers, Rich. Okay. Jump in, <laughs> please. No, I, I think that would be fine. If, if uh, you have a list of those properties where you would like to see if we can get some setbacks that belong to Smith, I can actually contact uh, um, John Berryhill. I can that I can do that. Okay, I can pull out of that spreadsheet that okay. Kent gave me um, the Smith ones, and just put them in their own separate spreadsheet. Yep, and just send and, it to me, and I'll I'll send John an email or try to connect with him. All right. Okay, so that's a good. It, it, it a does good require key. it does require the facilities director and the grounds um, the grounds foreman or the ground superintendent. Uh, that's how we did the plantings. Even though they were in the public right away, we still wanted to reach out to Smith when we planted those mm -hmm. um, um, hardy rubber trees along the front of um, right oh. by John Green Hall and going down towards um, St. John's St. John's Episcopal Church. I think it's yeah. So it's possible that when we suggest to them the the sites that we have in mind for setback trees, they might say, "Oh, well, we could just plant trees there." And they would be our trees and we'll maintain them. And they might prefer to do that instead of having them be the city's trees that, you know, that they, you know, are not allowed to ever cut down. <laughs> well, again, like the STO, we have to ask, right? We need to, we need, there yeah. needs to be a little uh, conversation and maybe we could convince them that uh, they, that would be a good thing. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, they're forever enshrined in, um, the uh, registry of deeds. So, yeah, they might like to, I mean, they could have an option. We could say, here's some places where we've thought about would be great sites to have some, some more trees planted. And we have this program, the setback program that's, you know, isn't is a possibility for you that, you know, you wouldn't have any expense 
but there is a you know the other side of it it would be the city's tree on the deed and but of course if you'd prefer to plant a tree yourselves then maybe that's something you'd like to do <laughs> i kind of diverted the conversation away from that's molly's okay. direction directing um because of the smith one you were using as yeah. an example that's a whole so that's the system and just okay. to just to, to wrap that up you no need for a letter for smith um do you just it would be just a matter of having a list for rich to make an appointment with john barrymore is that everybody on the same page mm -hmm. and now continue molly sorry okay. about that so for other guides, entities <laughs> yes for the other entities especially um um well some of the entities some of them are llc's um that i guess presumably rent out their you know buildings to tenants some are maybe condos not sure um some of them are city properties like the police and james house i'm not sure who to approach about those um there's michael's house um i guess that's a separate entity um so i guess i have questions about um how to approach the llcs i mean would it just be a general letter like you know the urban forestry commission has been working on planting more trees in town and we've noticed some sites that throughout town including some on your property that would be a perfect place for a tree and then explain the setback just a general letter like that is that what we're asking for i think that sounds good okay then then what kind of follow up though would be like and who would the they christian science reading room is probably one of the best downtown sites of all mm. hmm. used to be a right. very, used to be a very large uh, silver maple there Many yeah years. When right. I was, when I was a college student, so we left a uh, we left a door hanger on on that facility. Oh, good. Okay, yeah. it might be um, a priority and some kind of a I don't know way to build a special relationship to try to get them to embrace. I don't know. Well, I don't know well, how. I don't know any Chris anybody from that organization. Does anyone know any of the Christian Science Reading Room people? No. no. It's a wonderful spot. I know one person who is a Christian scientist, so maybe she would know. Oh, ask if she has any insight. Contact people would be. Um, Molly, one. if you if you create like a um, a generic letterhead and you want to mm -hmm. send it to me, I'd be more than happy to review it. Okay, great. Um, All right. Because I think what we would do is we would be put it on city letterhead. Yes. And then mm -hmm. sent uh, through. Uh, through the city's postal system, right? And then to the U.S. Postal Service. Okay, so at the end of the letter, should I say, if you're interested in this, please contact X, contact you, Rich? Or... Uh, actually, I think what we might do is we might we might utilize, you can put my name there, or and but we should put the QR code for these so they can actually go right to the, um, right to the form if they're interested oh, in wow. no Further questions, contact the tree warden. But if you're interested in a tree now, just, you know, get your phone uh -huh. out, click this button, or sorry, uh, take a photograph of the QR code. Uh-huh. Um, All right. But I mean, you know, typically- the typically, one person- Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, but typically, like, sometimes there's, like, multiple, if you do make contact with people, as we all know, there's mul sometimes multiple meetings that are required in order to sort of, like, massage the whole- process and because it's you know even though we we live in a very electronic world a virtual world people like to be like to meet each other and sometimes um i remember when we planted on the a property on the um, northampton housing authority i mean rob and i went there like multiple times and met with the director and the assistant director um and one of the grounds um one of the grounds uh supervisor the maintenance supervisor for the ground so you know if we had to walk the site so, you know, same with Cooley Dickinson when we had the yeah. big planting there. That was a yeah. Sue Sue gave me the the uh, the proper terminology. It's a high touch, a high touch, <laughs> uh, <laughs> high touch uh, contact pro contact project. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 
and, and, and I mean, the other thing too is let's remember, you know, Rob, Rob worked in uh, very mysterious ways. So, you know, he would, he, he, uh, he would have like a, like a sack full of trees going around town. And next thing you know, he'd come back, the sack would be empty. And I don't know how he did it, but I mean, he did spend a lot of time interfacing, uh, mm -hmm. communicating with people about it. And I think sometimes the follow-up can be just that. If um, like for Michael's house, there has to be some sort of a maintenance office or a main office there. Someone could just go introduce themselves and say, hi, I'm from the Urban Forestry Commission. I was just wondering if you received our letter about doing some setback plantings. You know, I think mm. it, I think uh, the human touch goes a long way. I might be able to help Very on helpful. that because I worked with them on a planting before. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, and they, they have a lot of space in the front of the building. Yeah. They're all Norway maples, I think, what's left of the trees that are there. Right. Just, but, yeah, so if you want to send that to me, Molly, I'd be happy okay. to read. Great. I'll do the list for Smith College and I'll write the letter. Okay. A, a draft letter for you. All right. Anything, anyone else have comments about the setback? Just Oh, um, David and Ken, could you send me, do you have a list of the places that you put the door hangers on? It would be good to know if I'm writing a letter to somebody who already got a door hanger. I do. I kept track of that. I can send that to you. Okay, great. Also, I I have one other Smith College site that didn't make it onto the list, so I'll, I'll send you that address and maybe you could add it to what you great. get. Great. Sure. Yeah. Or you good can just point. put it in a spreadsheet, Kent. Okay. Yeah, the we maybe we should talk some talk offline about how to manage this because I think there's maybe more than one spreadsheet now. Oh, okay. I'm not sure. All right. Anyone anything else before we move on? It's got two minutes left. Is there any other business not anticipated by the chair that a member of the commission wants to bring up? Uh Jen. Uh, I just want to mention, David, I want to, um, my time is a little more spacious now, and I just want to circle back and see if we can get um, you and me and um, Jordan to go out to JFK. So so at least I have an idea so we can, um, so I can include that in our spring um, nursery order that we could, that could be a big planting for us in the spring. And I appreciate all the work you've done so far, but I'll email you and we can try to get a date that right. we could go Sounds there. Good. Thanks, Jim. Great. Thank you. Okay. Uh, could you include me in that as well? I'd like to, I'm right over the fence. I'd like to just we can walk around. Come sometime. on. You can just jump over the fence. Come on. I can now. I couldn't before. I can now. <laughs> uh, all right. Any other business not anticipated by the chair? Okay. Uh, could I get a motion to adjourn the meeting? I'll move. Uh, we have a motion. I'll for second. 10 seconds. Okay. Uh, there's a motion to adjourn the meeting and there's a second. Um, any discussion? All in favor, raise your hands, please. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Thank you Bonnie.